namaste uh, today uh, our discussion is on shock wave and boundary layer interaction right so so far we had a discussion on uh, viscous interaction that you know and in the viscous interaction we had a discussion on uh, strong shock weak shock and so on right So I acknowledge John D. Anderson's hypersonic and high temperature gas dynamics. Right. So this is what the discussion we had before. Um, we had a strong and weak interaction. This is a viscous interaction purely, right? So there is no shock interacted with the uh, boundary layer here. So in this case, uh, we uh, had a discussion uh, that there is a, a strong strong interaction here because of the d del star by dx is large and in the other side we can say that d del star by dx is moderate right where del star is the displacement thickness um, so that is what our discussion so when it is moderate then we understand that this is a weak interaction and then we had a discussion on the similarity parameter, right? Uh, I hope you remember the similarity parameter, chai bar, uh, which is uh, otherwise known as the induced pressure increment, right? So we had a discussion that if chai bar is greater than three and uh, then it is a strong interaction and if the chai bar is less than three, we have a weak interaction. So this is what we had a discussion. And so far, we didn't uh, have anything on the shock and the boundary layer interaction. So let us see, um, let us consider a two dimensional plate and uh, then uh, we will discuss about the shock wave and the boundary layer interaction, right? So let us say, um, let us consider the same flat plate, right? We have a flat plate here and we consider the flow and we had a shock right but in a in a aircraft or in a any body the other location of the body also can have a shock wave right so when it is flying at a hypersonic speed that is definitely true that any shock can have an incident on the other parts of the body right so other parts of the body in turn there already there is a boundary layer and there is a shock right so we need to have a discussion on that such shock wave that impinges on the boundary layer right so uh, here in this case we can note that uh, there is a boundary layer growing along the flat plate right so here the boundary layer growing along the flat plate where at the downstream location an incident shock wave impinges on the boundary layer right so this is the incident shock wave which impinges on the boundary layer so we have a boundary layer here and this is an incident shock and this shock is impinging on the boundary layer now the large pressure rise across the shock wave right that acts as a severe adverse pressure gradient so between this shock and you know that creates the pressure difference in such a way that this boundary layer here it separates from the flat plate right so now you see the boundary layer which separates from this point right so because of the pressure behind the shock that feeds the upstream through the shock portion of the boundary layer. Now, the separation takes place ahead of the impingement. You can see the impingement is here, but the separation is here. Right? So, the separation takes place ahead of the impingement point of the incident shock. So, that is what happening here. Now, uh, the simple point is when there is an incident shock, the, there is a separation of the boundary layer, right? And the separation of the boundary layer 
because of the change in pressure the separation of the boundary layer happens well ahead of the um, separation right well ahead of the shock impingement point we can say this is a shock impingement point and here you have a separation right so this separated boundary layer now you have a separated boundary layer here and this boundary layer in turn creates a shock right we know that there is a change in shape of the body can create a shock wave right so uh, we had a discussion that because of the uh, thickness of the boundary layer and the shock wave and the viscous interaction and all those things the effective body shape changes that effective body shape in turn produces a different shock wave than the original one now the case here is because of the incident shock wave the boundary layer the whole set of the boundary layer is separating right so this separated boundary layer in turn creates a shock right so we can call this as a second shock wave this is because of the um this is because of the separation point and this is the shock wave is called as induced separation shock right so the then what happened the separated boundary layer need to reattach right so it is subsequently turns back towards the flat plate and reattaching on the surface some work here right reattaching on the surface that creates a third shock right so we can say that this incident shock is the first shock and because of the incident shock the bound the separation there is a separation of the boundary layer and that separation in turn creates a secondary shock right this is secondary shock again the separated boundary layer should reattach at the downstream of the flat plate right and that in turn creates a reattachment shock so we can call this as a third shock right again between the separation point and the reattachment shocks right separation and the reattachment shock there are lot of expansion waves right there are a lot of expansion waves generated where the boundary is turning back to the surface so we have a we have a uh, expansion waves here right so at the point of reattachment here right at the point of reattachment we can note that the boundary layer has become relatively thin when compared to the original boundary right and the pressure is high and subsequently this becomes a region of high local aerodynamic drag or i mean high local aerodynamic heating region right so um, further again away from the flat plate the separation and the reattachment shock merges right you have a separation shock and the reattachment shock merges to form a conventional reflected zone so we can say somewhere here we can have the reflected shock wave right so away from the flat plate the separation and the reattachment shock merges to form the reflected shock wave right now the scale and the intensity or severity of the interaction that depends upon whether the boundary layer is laminar or turbulent right so it depends so because of the laminar boundary layer the separation is more readily than the turbulent boundary layer and in various other characteristics we can say or the boundary layer right based on the boundary layer whether it is a laminar or turbulent but the process is not so simple 
right? Various complications are involved. Uh, hence, the fluid dynamic and the mathematical details of uh, such an interaction region are really complex. And uh, say the prediction of prediction of the behavior of the shockwave and boundary layer interaction is still a state of art research problem, right? So this is all about the shockwave and the boundary layer interaction. So let me have an overview once again with the shockwave and the boundary layer interaction. I can say that there is a say any um, any vehicle. Say if you have a hypersonic vehicle and there is a formation. Say if you have a wing-like structure or whatever it is, right? So when there is a formation of boundary layer and then the shock on another body can hit the boundary layer. So necessarily the Mach number is very much greater than one. So let us assume that this is a flat plate. I, I want to show the two dimensional picture here. So here there is a flat plate and there is a boundary layer formation on the surface. Now there is a shock. The first shock is an incident shock which hits the uh, boundary layer. Because of the pressure difference across the shock, well ahead of the shock, the boundary layer separates. Right? So you can see well ahead of the incident shock wave impingement, there is a separation point. So because of the separation, again we can say that the effective body shape changes for the flat plate and hence there is a induced separation shock wave. Right? So when there is an induced separation shock wave, which is called as the secondary shock, right? So here what happens again, when the boundary layer separated will be reattached at the downstream of the flat plate. So in the reattachment region, there is a reattachment shock again. So this is the reattachment shock and this is the third shock, right? Uh, again, in between the induced separation shock and the reflector, I mean, reattachment shock, there are the expansion waves that we are uh, we have discussed. Again, this secondary shock and the third shock, which in turn have a reflected shock wave at the downstream further, right? And uh, the uh, of course, that is called the reflected shock wave, right? Again, we understand that the thickness of the boundary layer changes here because of the reattachment and uh, all those things. And we understand that there is a high uh, temperature increase and that is called a local aerodynamic heating at somewhere here, right? And you know the reason for that, right? The change in boundary layer thickness. Now, the scale and the intensity I told uh, the of the interaction entirely depends upon the boundary layer, whether it is a laminar boundary layer or a turbulent boundary layer, right? And moreover, we conclude that the understanding the fluid dynamic aspect and discussing the mathematical details of the interactions are really complex and the full prediction of such a shock wave under the boundary layer interaction is still a state of our research problem, right? So I stop at this point uh, regarding the shockwave under the boundary layer interaction, right? Thank you.